Hello, this is R-I-C-K-Y, the mainstream movie guy. Hey guys, today I am doing the trailer review for Spider-Man and it's freaking Spider-Man. This is what I've always wanted from Spider-Man and, and I've said it long before, the reason why this Spider-Man will be the definitive Spider-Man is because he can actually interact with other superheroes. And that's what really makes it stand out. Now, do they have some really cool looking stuff? Was this scene with the Avengers hilarious? Yes. You could definitely see that this part where, you know, like, hey, wait, you're not the Hulk. Uh, or, or you're not the guys, you know, Hulk gave it away. It was really funny and just done very well. So I really enjoyed that. Uh, over to, um, you know, being a kid and like liking girls and all that kind of stuff in college, or, or sorry, in high school. And, like, you know, being afraid to talk to them. Definitely, I feel like everyone could relate to that at some point, uh, as well as being the girl as well. Uh, they really did the, like, ugly ducking, duckling kind of thing to Zendaya because she. I, it's funny because she looks like she has makeup to make her look worse as opposed to the other way around. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously the hair is, like, when the hair's back and all that kind of stuff, and then when you let the hair down, it's just like, oh, my God. So I do feel like there will be the twist where she is, you know, the maybe the girl he takes to homecoming in the end and then beautiful and all that kind of stuff. And like it was there all the time. And because we expect a John Hughes type of movie, although later on it does seem like he's dating the girl Liz. Uh, so we'll get to that in a second. This is the Tony Stark part. Definitely, a, uh, I think, a great part. Just because it's so Tony Stark. Like, you don't do anything I would do. But if I don't do anything, I wouldn't do. A gray area right there. So really done well. I think it was uh, really fun in terms of that, you know, being bored at school. Uh, seeing everything on how it turned out. This is the part where every uh, geek cried, by the way, because if you didn't notice, that was a Death Star. That was a Death Star, man. Uh, so yeah, so he broke the Death Star. Uh, I'm going to call this guy Luke. Uh, so that's uh, what uh, what I've decided. He is now Luke, and for will ever be Luke. He blew up the Death Star. So yeah, so it was really funny in terms of how uh, that went down. The Vulture, we got to finally see the Vulture in all his glory, and it looks like a really creepy kind of design. I love the design. I'm, I'm very curious to see how. Uh, and Michael Keaton's voice is just so good at it. Um... We see that we got the first glimpse that what we saw at the end was, of course, that Tony and Spider-Man will eventually take on this vulture guy. Uh, my guess is Tony's going to end up getting uh, sidelined uh, because of something. And then, you know, uh, Peter is going to be the have to one to save the day kind of thing. So here's what I was talking about. It looks like the pretty girl that he really liked, uh, which I believe her name was Liz, in the beginning is talking to him later. So my guess is either like she becomes his like science partner or something like that in a class uh, and like they're trying to do homework and then, you know, he can't because he's Spider-Man uh, or maybe, you know, maybe she takes a shining to him and he, he, he stands out talking to her and there you go. So really kind of curious in terms of that. Uh, but if I'm not mistaken, that is the girl from the beginning because she... Yeah, that is a girl from the beginning, just she has lip gloss here and not on there. Uh, so yeah, so really interesting in terms of, I, I like the idea that we're going to get like a college, or col or high school, like Howard Hughes kind of movie. Um, or sorry, not Howard Hughes, uh, J John Hughes? J uh, oh wow, I forgot. The 80s movies. Let me know in the comment section down below, who is the 80s movies guy? Uh, Breakfast Club, all those kind of movies. Um, and they're a great shot of the vulture right there. So yeah, really, uh, like it. And then you get that iconic shot of, uh, you know, him holding everything together. We've seen that before. I think that's an homage actually to the train in Spider-Man 2, uh, with Tobey Maguire. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think that's a straight up homage? I think it is. Um, and, and that just beautiful shot because you could actually see the Statue of Liberty in the background. So really cool when it comes to that. But then, yeah, definitely the money shot was the actual ending where you see, oops, it's hard to get that frame. Where 
where you see Iron Man and Spider-Man right there. That everyone lost their mind at. I, I was I literally watched that uh, with one of my friends. He's like, "Oh shit!" Like you know, it, it's just it's so amazing that we get this that we get something we've never gotten before in a Spider-Man movie. Spider-Man teaming up with someone else. Yeah, yeah, the Goblin and all that kind of stuff. But it, it really, this is the big team up that we've been waiting for. Superhero team up with Spider-Man. I'm really excited of what we're going to get in the future. Um, and yeah, uh, who, do you think anyone else is going to make a cameo besides just Tony Stark and Happy Hogan? Do you think there will be any other surprise ones? Let me know in the comments section down below. I'm very excited for this movie. Spider-Man is my all-time uh, superhero uh, in terms of, you know, I relate to him like growing up as a kid and all that kind of stuff and being the geek, the techie, and, you know, um, later on uh, discovering girls and all that kind of stuff. But definitely Spider-Man's always, he's the most relatable character. Like when you talk about the reason why Batman and Spider-Man are the top superheroes of all time in terms of what people like and what people want, it's simply because of this fact that with this, they are normal people at the end of the day that one got bit, but he still goes through everyday life. And one's a billionaire, uh, but he's just a normal person. So they're, they're the most relatable. And I think that's why they will always be the uh, top ones. And again, that's probably why a lot of people gravitate towards Tony Stark once Marvel started the cinematic universe. Was because, again, he's essentially like the Iron Man story or sorry, the Batman story, but with a different take and different twist on it uh, in terms of being the billionaire philanthropist playboy and all that stuff. But yeah, so I'm really excited. Uh, I am going to make a prediction today. Spider-Man will be the first, this will be the first Spider-Man movie ever to cross the billion dollar mark. And keep in mind, no other Marvel movie has done it outside uh, a, solo iron, a solo movie. No solo movie has done it with the exception of Iron Man 3. So Avengers, and uh, um, Ultron, and uh, Civil War crossed the billion dollar mark, but those were all like group movies. Even Civil War was really like a group movie. So with this shot alone, with Iron Man and Spider-Man at the end of it, and you could, you know, it's not, it's not a, it's, it's, it's kind of like Winter Soldier. You got, you know, you got Natasha, you got the Falcon, you got different people in there. With this one, it's going to cross a billion dollars. Uh, that's my prediction, and we will see if it comes true. All right, guys. Thank you as always for watching. Make sure to give that like, thumbs up, and we will have more trailer reviews for you soon. This has been R-I-C-K-Y, the mainstream movie guy.